Do you believe in aliens? If so, imagine what would happen if hostile aliens decided to invade and take over Earth. They have two options. A. To use their technology to quickly destroy our civilization. Or B. Live quietly among us until they all decide to strike at once. Both options seem terrible, but they parallel what happens in the lytic and logic cycles of viral reproduction. Good morning, Apibiology. Today, the Dunning Disciples talk about viruses. You may be wondering, isn't a virus that small organism that invades my body every time I'm sick? Well, yes and no. A virus isn't an organism because an organism is an individual animal, plant, or single-celled life form. But viruses aren't alive. They aren't even single-celled. Maybe you're confusing it with bacteria. Bacteria, unlike viruses, are alive and are unicellular microorganisms. Bacteria can be killed with antibiotics, and viruses cannot. Viruses need a host in order to survive. They are intracellular parasites, which means they can only replicate within a host cell. Overall, the structure of bacteria and viruses are very different, but have one thing in common, DNA. The DNA in viruses will help them replicate in order to survive within a host. In bacteria, the DNA will get copied and the bacterium will then divide into two and will continue to replicate. Although there are different types of viruses, today we're going to focus on bacteriophages, which are viruses that infect bacteria. Earlier, I mentioned that viral reproduction can happen in two cycles, the lytic cycle or the lysogenic cycle. Let's start off with the lytic cycle. We have our bacteriophage which is essentially a virus that specifically attacks a bacteria, and it grabs onto and attaches to the surface of the host bacteria cell using its tail fibers. In doing so, the genetic information in the head or the capsid of the bacteriophage is now able to inject its viral DNA or RNA into the host cell, degrading the host DNA. The host cell transcribes and translates this viral DNA into viral proteins, which code for the assembly of more bacteriophages inside of the cell. Ultimately, so many bacteriophages are created that the cell just can't contain them anymore, causing the host cell to burst or lice, releasing those bacteriophages and allowing them to attach to other bacterial cells, and the cycle continues. Now that we've discussed the lytic cycle, it's time to talk about the lysogenic cycle. Similar to the lytic cycle, the bacteriophage attaches to the bacteria and injects the viral DNA into the host cell. But, Instead of immediately working to transcribe and translate the genetic material, its DNA is integrated into the bacterial DNA. This makes it so that when the bacterial cell replicates, it will replicate with the viral DNA instead of its own, creating more and more and more and more of the infected cells. When these cells are influenced by environmental factors such as temperature, pH, or UV light, the viral DNA can be activated in all of the infected cells and they will start transcribing and translating that viral DNA at the same time, with potentially millions of cells going through the lytic cycle and spreading the virus even more in the organism it inhabits. Obviously, both of these cycles are devastating to bacterial cells, but there are other procedural differences between the two that exist apart from the ones I just mentioned. Wow, I know, that was a lot to take in. But don't worry, remember, anyone can wear a lab coat. So keep exploring, and you'll love what you've discovered.